This is Professor Michael Chapman. I'm one of the most experienced IVF doctors in Australia. I believe that an important part that I can contribute is to educate patients in relation to fertility, infertility and all that that involves. These series of podcasts help to educate you. I hope they are helpful to you. If you wish to know more, however, I'm more than happy to have you contact me via email, which is profmchapman at gmail.com or make an appointment to see me on 91384222. An Australian scientist, David Gardner, some 15 years ago, developed a, a system for grading embryos. And you look at those two things, the inner cell mass and the trophectoderm, and they're graded from A to E. So A is first class, top distinction, and so on. B is a distinction, C is a credit, and after that, really, embryos, if they, if in any either of the trophectoderm or the inner cell mass, if they are Cs, the chances of a pregnancy with that embryo are very low, even though it is a blastocyst. So there is a grading system, and it's based on the number of cells that scientists can see and the shape of them. So that grading system, and your scientist will tell you there's AAs and BBs or A and A and B, BA, there's a whole combination of them. But the best embryo is obviously the AA. That's going to give you greatest chance of success. Only slightly behind that is the BA or the AB. Once we get to C in the equation, we're probably dropping down about, mm, not to half, but certainly dropping by a third of a chance of becoming pregnant. But that's still worth putting back because we still see pregnancies from them. Not at the 40% per cycle, but maybe at the 20% per cycle. So we certainly don't throw those embryos away. In, t t in terms of assessing beyond the AABB uh, level of grading, which is basically in the eye of the beholder, the scientist, various other techniques have been used to find the best embryo. The first of these is to genetically test the embryos. So in this situation, we take of those 400 cells, we take 10 of them and send them off to the laboratory. They work out the chromosome makeup of those cells. And what they're looking for is the 23 pairs of chromosomes that we all have. Aberrations of those, an extra one or missing one, means the embryo is unlikely to survive, either implantation or it will miscarry. Very few actually go beyond uh, that stage, but that's, for instance, Down syndrome is one of them. And that's why genetic testing is used, because for two reasons. One is obviously it gets rid of the possibility of a Down syndrome, but um, more importantly, if your embryo has a normal number of chromosomes, when we put that back, it probably has closer to 60% chance of producing a baby rather than the 40% when that, that's invasive. Um, we do lose the occasional embryo in doing the biopsy and the freezing and the thawing that's required for that. So people have looked for non-invasive approaches. So one approach is using artificial intelligence that goes back to those time-lapse photographs I was talking about. And the computer, the AI system has been, has looked at thousands of images or well, hundreds of thousands of images and come up with solutions or algorithms that say, based on what we can see, we think that this embryo is going to be the best of the, of the lot. That's been tested against the scientist and maybe it's slightly better, uh, but not much better. And you've got to remember that the quality of the embryo is not particularly important in terms of the long-term pregnancy, chances of a pregnancy, because if you have five embryos, you do the PGT and there's one that's good, that's fine, but we still would have put the other four back, and at some point we would have put that fifth embryo back and you would have got pregnant with that embryo. So it doesn't change the long-term chances of success. What it does is bring forward the chances of success in time and money and emotional stress. There is some value in, in doing that. In, in trying to get work out which is the best embryo. There's some other things that are, people are looking at is what the embryo secretes and looking at the profile of the, the chemicals that it, it uh, releases. And there's some evidence that on the basis of that, you could pick good embryos rather than not so good embryos, even though they're all blastocysts. 
So choosing an embryo, finding the best quality one is is to some extent doable. We certainly can rank them just by looking at them. Beyond that, we've got AI and there's some other tests that are being done. Uh, one of my colleagues is looking at some sort of fluorescence that you can actually shine a laser into an embryo. It gives off a special light and those embryos might be better embryos than others. Certainly in mice, that seems to be the case. There are things evolving all the time. The process is pretty complicated. It's what we've focused on. It's, it's why from when, I, when I started doing IVF, 10% putting three embryos back was regarded as great. <laughs> Today, putting one embryo back, we consider 40% to be great. Big changes because the science has got better. I'm no better than I was 40 years ago in terms of the embryology. It's, what, it's the scientists who've made IVF better for patients. And don't forget that you can access all the previous episodes by going to our website www.theivfjourney.com and select IVF Journey Podcast from the navigation menu.